Hello everyone, welcome to my Unity beginner tutorial series. So in this tutorial series, I am going to assume that you are you are absolute beginners into programming and I'm gonna give you a brief introduction into the interface of the Unity and I am going to introduce you this start method and update method and what are the use of them. And I'm gonna show you how to simply print some value into the console of the editor all right so i assume you are a really a beginner and so you have already installed unity let's get started i'll first give a project name i'll call it test one create right so this is what we got here is the scene view and here is the game view and this is the project uh, asset browser and this is the inspector so i'll give you a quick introduction about what each of these things are so this scene view this is where we can see the things the stuff that we have put it to the game world and this game view so here for example I'll put a 3d object a cube like this right click here and 3d and select cube and you can see that 3d object here and this game view is we see whatever we can see through the main camera so the main camera in this game is this and when I select the main camera you will also see a preview of what we can see through this main camera so that's what we always see in the game view like this and here we have a couple of controller options we have move tool rotation tool scale tool and rectangle tool and all three so with move tool you can move objects and with rotate tool you can rotate objects well basically that's it i think you get it so actually i'm going to give a more emphasis on the programming side how to get started with programming how to think like a programmer how to build a logic that those are the things that I'm going to give more weight on this course okay so yeah we have a cube so I'll quickly make this look like a plane so this is like the flow of the game world I'll place it in the 0, 0, 0 position like this and when I select the camera this is how we see so I'll quickly change the color of this flow so I'll create a new folder called materials and inside the materials folder I'll create a new material I'll call it M flow and I'll give it a new color let's say I'll make it green so it looks like a grass okay now how can I assign this material for that first select this cube and under the materials you have this element drag and drop here like this now this is how you see the game world alright and yeah I'll name this one flow select the object that you want to rename and press F2 so you can rename it okay now I'll add another 3d object basically a capsule 
like this and I can't see that in the game world I'll move it down a little bit like this that's too large wait I'll make it in the zero zero position and move it up like this okay and I'll create another material M player so this is my player character so that's why I name it player M stands for material okay select the capsule I'll name it player and drag and drop this player material here like this so by the way this is inspector inspector is when you select one of the objects in the hierarchy it will show details about that object in this inspector panel like this all right so this is our player now i'm going to create our first the very first script so before that i'll create a new folder called scripts like this and create the new script i'll name this one player script and open it right here is my script opened with uh, visual studio and if you don't have visual studio you may ha have also mono behavior sorry mono developer as well but no matter what is the editor you are using for code editing that's uh, the code is same right so here by default we have two methods start and update so this start method will be called at the beginning when we start playing the game and this update method will be called on each frame of the game so basically the start method we can use for things like initializing variables values uh, anything and also update method we can use to do things that like moving the character or making changes according to the time in the game so yeah so how can you know that these methods are being called at the beginning and this at the each frame well I'll show you how so in this here we have another tab called console and if you don't have it you can go here and open that window where is it right here under window and general console so we can print text to this uh, print stuff here into the console using this method debug dot log and in between these brackets we can put to these characters like this and print anything we need so I'll here type start called and save the script and go back to the editor so now in order to execute that script I need I should have attached this script I just created to at least one of these objects that we have in this sample scene so I'll select the player and drag and drop this player script to the inspect of the player now the script player script is attached to the player like this right now I'll open the console again like this and play the game now as you can see this output start called is printed to my console 
so now you can believe that this is happens as I told you now here the update method let's do the same thing debug.log I'll just print update right and save and come back to editor and I'll play it again right now as you can see this update is being printed to my console endlessly okay as you can see the messages count keep increasing it's already about thousand so that means it is being printed into my console in each frame okay now you can believe me right so also I'll do one small thing for today so in programming there are things called variables we have integer variables and float variables and string variables and double variables I'm not going to explain each and every type of them for now I'll create a new variable int and I'll name it frame count like this Mm, no, I'll call it loop count. And for the default value, I'll put zero. But even if I don't put zero, by default, this will have the value zero. I just put it so that you can see. If you want something like five, you can do it like this. Okay, so this int type can hold integer values like 0 1 2 3 or minus 3 minus 4 like that and it can't hold floating point values like 2.3 3.5 anything with the decimal point they can't hold they will hold only the integer part all right now here i can add a plus and add type loop count like this so what this will do is it will print update and after that a space and it will print the value of loop count variable that I have into the console let's see right now as you can see update and space 0 is being printed into the console now here I will update the loop count variable value like this loop count equals loop count plus one that means get the value of loop count and add one to that and put the result back into the loop count so for example if I have already have the loop count value for value 5 then add 1 to 5 and then add 1 to 5 that means 6 and put the 6 into the loop count so at the end of the line the loop count will have 6 if the previous value is 5 now let's see what happens okay now as you can see the loop count value keep increasing like this one by one it is being increased okay so that's the introduction to start method and update method and uh, in the next episode I'll show you how to move this character this player character through the code and see you in the next episode Goodbye.